Today, I'm being disciples, a spirit of thanksgiving. Living in a spirit of thanksgiving will transform one's life. Let's discover how to do that in a conversation with my very special guest. Welcome to the Being Disciples podcast with Pastor John. All notes and links can be found at virtualstudywith.us. Again, that's virtualstudywith.us. This is a weekly podcast published every Monday that is meant to help believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ to mature in their faith. These principles should be useful to anyone who listens, but especially for the believers who are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. You're invited on this journey to explore what it means to be a disciple. Let's begin by joining Pastor John with an opening prayer. Pastor John? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for so great a love that you have for us, that you sent your only begotten Son to redeem us and to restore us into a right relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, that for the joy set before you, you were willing to leave the majesty of heaven to come into this world, your creation, to redeem us and to restore us into a loving relationship with the Father. Thank you for laying down your life for us, both in the living of it and in the dying. In life, you showed us how we ought to live in intimacy with the Father, following the leading of Holy Spirit and loving one another. In death, you gave your body for us, bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions. You were beaten, battered, and bloodied, even pierced to the shedding of your blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Now we ask you to give us the words to say and to open our ears and hearts to hear what you would say to us. Please bless all who join us today and all who hear this message on a recording. Amen. Welcome to episode 34 of Being Disciples. Today we're going to take a look at a spirit of thanksgiving as we enter this Thanksgiving week. And it's more than just a holiday, it's a lifestyle. The thought here is we need to learn to live in a spirit of thanksgiving. And if we do so, that will transform our life, I contend. The first thing it will do, and perhaps the most important thing, is one's focus on self will transfer to focus upon the one to whom thanks is being given. Thanksgiving also promotes a level of humility within a person. So there are basically three levels to this process. First, we focus on self with the realization of something that is a blessing. We must first realize the blessings we have. Secondly, our focus shifts to the person involved, if there is someone, in providing the blessing. The blessing being material, emotional, spiritual, or whatever it is. Then the third thing is the focus shifts to God as the provider of all good things, all blessings. God is the creator of all things, seen and unseen, and our provider of all we need, as well as the desires of our heart. We are instructed to give thanks for all things, including the benefits of being in a relationship with God, our circumstances in life, the love of God for us, and more. In walking with God, we are instructed to keep our focus on things above which helps us to maintain a proper outlook on our life, our calling, and our purpose. King David and other authors of the Psalms seem to value the spirit of thanksgiving and made it a point to instruct his soul to give thanks and to bless the Lord. Psalms 103 verse 2 reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. To bless the Lord is to humble oneself in recognition of Yahweh. Bless is Strong's Hebrew number 1288, Barak. It is a verb, so it is an action one would undertake. The definition is to kneel or bless. To kneel is an act of humbling oneself and presenting oneself as vulnerable. To kneel is an act of humbling oneself and presenting oneself as vulnerable. To kneel or genuflect before a king would be to be humble and to be vulnerable before him even to being beheaded if found unworthy to be in his presence, as one bowed the head before the king. We are blessing or humbling ourselves before the Lord, Yahweh, God Almighty. He alone holds the power over life and death. This is where reverence and awe come into play. Now David is instructing his soul throughout this psalm to recognize the Lord in all his majesty. Is he simply reminding himself to act properly before God? or is his spirit instructing his soul? We must remember a few things. God is the creator of all things seen and unseen, so we are his. God the Father sent the Son to redeem us, so we are his. If we are children of God, we have surrendered ourselves to him, so we are his. 
Due to who God is, he is worthy of reverence and awe in our sight. We serve him. He created us with spirit, soul, and body. We are to rule with our spirit over our soul and body. The spirit being our innermost being, including our heart. The soul is the mind, will, and emotions. And our body is our flesh and bone and all of its parts. He sent Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth as our guide, our comforter, etc. Our spirit ought to be in tune with the leading of Holy Spirit. I believe David was taking authority over his complete self, instructing it to be mindful to have reverence and awe toward God. This may be seen in verse 1 as he expands the command to all that is within me. Psalms 103 verse 1, David states, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is for thanksgiving, the reason he says to forget not all his benefits. The reason for remembering the benefits is to give thanks to God for them. The first definition for benefit in the Merriam-Webster online dictionary is 1a, something that produces good or helpful results or effects or that promotes well-being. Advantage. 1b says useful aid, as in help. Now, as we saw in episode 30, who God says he is, the names of God represent who he is and what he wants to be for us. In other words, his benefits to us, his children. Hence, in verse 1, David says to bless his holy name. In reciting the names of God and the meanings of the names, we do two things. We remember who he is and glorify him as we do so. And we remember what he wants to be to us, which also does two things. It causes us to be thankful to and for him, and it causes our faith to grow as we learn to trust and depend upon him. The remainder of the psalm gives the reasons for blessing the Lord, but for our purposes here, verses 3 to 5 tell us why we are to be thankful. It reads, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Remember, this is the word of God, scripture. We have a choice whether we want to believe the word of God or believe others or the traditions of man, our circumstances, or whatever else. The only way to move into a deeper relationship with God and to realize all his benefits with which he desires to bless us is to believe his word above all else. Paul writes of this in his letter to the believers at Rome. In Romans chapter 3, verses 3 to 4, it reads, What if some were unfaithful? Does their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means. Let God be true, though everyone were a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. So do you want to be secure in your day of judgment? Use the word of God to determine all truth. Live by that word and teach that word. If your words are his word, I believe you will be found righteous at your time of judgment. Another thing to remember about the word of God is that it is Jesus. We saw this in episode 33, Communion and Study. John begins his gospel in chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and then verse 14, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Obey and live by the words of Christ Jesus, the son. He is the word of the father and all that the father represents. Remember all those names? In Colossians, Paul writes in chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, for in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Those verses would be the beginning of an excellent study. That would be enough to encourage us to walk in a spirit of thanksgiving, but we need to make it a core part of our life in Christ. How do we do that? As we spend time in scripture, we see examples of people doing so. For example, Paul wrote of this to the Ecclesia at Ephesus. Chapter 5, verses 18b through 21. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing and making melody to the Lord in your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. These verses could ignite another independent study. But I see three things here to set the stage. Then the act of living in a spirit of thanksgiving, and also a result of doing so. We are put into the right headspace to continuously being thankful when we, number one, are filled with the Spirit, allowing Holy Spirit to direct our steps. Number two, when we share with one another songs concerning the things of God. First, music soothes the soul. Second, the things of God give us reason to be thankful. Number three, when we are joyful in our hearts toward God, an attitude in our most inner being. Now, Paul instructs us to give thanks. He says, always, which is at all times, ever. And he says, for everything, for all, the whole, every kind of. He says to give thanks to God the Father. That is, all that the Son does is to glorify the Father. He says to give thanks to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The name of refers to his authority and position. We will look at this closer in two weeks in episode 36 which is Trinity Part 1, The Name of Jesus. That's scheduled to air on December 5. Then it brings us to our one result of living with such an attitude, a spirit of thanksgiving, that we fulfill the commandments of Christ Jesus, including to love one another. This means submitting ourselves to one another or seeing others as more significant than ourselves. It's an act of humble service in the love of God, having the same mind, the same love, being in one accord, you can refer to this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Paul reiterates this thought to the believers at Thessalonica. He takes it a step further than in this letter to Ephesus. Are you still wondering what the will of God is for you? Well, here he tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul says to give thanks in all circumstances in this translation. Notice it doesn't say for the circumstances. We are to give thanks in all circumstances. We are not to let our circumstances dictate our spirit of thanksgiving. The interlinear translation says, in everything give thanks, which reads a little different. To look at that, the word in, Strong's Greek 1722, N. Definition is in, on, at, by, with, the usage being in, on, or among. Everything, Strong's Greek 3956, pause. Definition, all, every. Usage, all, the whole, every kind of. And to give thanks, a Strong's Greek, number 2168, Eucharistio. Definition, to be thankful. The usage, I thank or give thanks. So study that as you will, but I think that it is clear that we are to be thankful, and not on occasion, but as an essential part of the Christian life. James reminds us of the source of our blessings. In chapter 1, verses 16 to 18, he says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. So all things are from God, and it is his good pleasure to provide for us all that we have need of. Ought we not walk in a spirit of thanksgiving to him? Now we'll pause here for a couple reminders from Garrett and we'll be joined by a very special guest today. Let's take just a moment to remind you that all notes and links can be found at virtualstudywith.us. Again, it's virtualstudywith.us. Feel free to use this broadcast or the notes as you disciple someone else, as you lead a small group, or as you dive deeper into your own study. We will now move into conversation with this week's guest. Thanks for those reminders, Garrett. With us today is a very special guest that I've been fortunate to see almost every day of my life for the past 43 years. 
my wife Sue. Welcome, Sue. First time on the broadcast. No, your second time on the broadcast. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you were on once with Carol when we were discussing a topic long ago. So, Gary, awesome. how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. I was just uh, looking forward to doing this spirit of Thanksgiving discussion here and be able to really go, hey, it's that time of year when we're thinking about it, but should it only be this time of the year? Or even one day. Yeah. So as we were discussing privately before the show, that this is really more of a testimony of the things we're thankful for and a witness of how we see God acting in our lives. And I think I've shared a number of times before that when I lay my head down on my pillow at night, I try to come up with four things that I'm thankful for regarding that day. And the first one is always my lovely wife, who God has shown his love through her, taught me many things. <laughs> and then I come up with three things unique to the day. So I'm actually considering those good and perfect gifts that God has given me throughout the day, whether it be circumstances, physical or emotional, whatever the type of gift it was. Okay. And Sue, I know we've talked many times about just how much better life is when we go through it with a thankful spirit. And I know you have experiences at work, but what are some of the ways you minister to people at work? Well, I just try to give them the fortunate love of God in a different way, not so much to come out verbally with it, just letting each person that I come in contact know that they're worth something, even if they're feeling down and out, that there is a purpose for them, whether they see it in themselves or not, or if they get frustrated and walk away. Or the same thing every day, just being down and out and having the woes of, I don't have money, I don't have this, but I just turn around and say, well, you might not have that, but you do have the roof over your head. You might have peanut butter and crackers to have, so you do have provisions there. And they just kind of stop and think and say, yeah, you're right. So you show people they have value, which yeah. is really something to be thankful for. Yeah. And for those who don't know, Sue is a support staff at a local hospital. How about when you encounter patients, let's say in an elevator, you've told me stories of what you do. What do you do there? Um, we just try to bring the humor to the place. Someone's coming in the elevator and I personally am not a very, oh, haven't been a very vocal person, so to speak there. I've been there for 29 years and, you know, somebody might know who I am. But the person that I work with, she's had a rough life, but she's been out and about and you could go from the top of the building to the bottom of the building. And even if she's rough around the edges, she puts a smile on somebody's face and she just makes it better. And when they always give her a hard time, like, oh, there's trouble. And I always tell her, well, it's not always a bad thing. I said, you make people laugh and that laughter is the best medicine. You have humor to say. Somebody getting in an elevator will just say, hey, arms and legs inside the ride, please. So Sue is an encouragement to her fellow employees, helping them through rough times, showing them that they have value. She does encounter patients and bring a smile to their face, showing them that there is love in the world. It's not all the deep, dark doldrums and that sort of thing. And Garrett, you have similar stuff, for example, with your medical stuff, uh, nurses yeah. and doctors you encounter at clinics and the hospital and stuff. I do. I do. It's a lot like what Sue says, because I'm in, in medical facility uh, at least once every other day. And so those people, I just kind of shine my light. And even though I have all these things and I get frustrated and down and out, and I sometimes just kind of go, okay, God, today I'm dealing with this. But everybody I come in contact with, I always do the same thing. Let's bring a little laughter, a little humor, especially if it's my dialysis group of people, you become a little bit of a family. So you know what you can say and, and talk to. Now, if it's just somebody randomly I'm walking into in the elevator or in, in the hallway going to another appointment that I don't regularly see on a regular basis, I usually find something to either make them laugh about or talk with while I'm doing that because it's like my whole goal is to be kind of, I kind of think the thought, surprise me, God. Okay, who's going to come across my path today? And that keeps me in the functional thought process of who am I supposed to bless today? And then I'm, I'm thankful for those ordained blessings that come along my way because there are so many different people. I had this happen today. I walked into the gas station and of course I have a spam winter hat and then I got a spam lanyard and the girl goes, do you work for spam? And I said, no, but I like to eat it. And she goes, well, that's pretty cool. She goes, I like spam too. And I thought to myself, well, I, here we go. And so I blessed her life. And I said, thank you for making me smile and asking about it. 
because it's those little things in life that can help propel people forward through their day, whether you know what's going on in their life or not. And that's what a I'm, sign that said, we'll work for food. You could say, yeah, I work for spam. But that would have worked great, you know, but again, it's one of those things where when you bump into these people, it's you, you being open to that ordained because each meeting is an ordained meeting for one purpose or another, if you keep your mindset in that. So then I'm thankful for those different people and different things I learn about throughout my day from just being in the moment and realizing that there there are people and, and ways to do things. And I don't care what situation you're in. I know I'm in the one dealing with major medical all the time. And people are like, how do you deal with it? If they ask me that, how do you keep an upbeat? And I go back to God. I said, God, Jesus Christ helps me through. And then if I lay that down and they're receptive, then we start having more of a conversation. If not, I let that be and know I planted a seed and I go about my day. It's awesome to be able to point back to his glory for why I'm still here, what I'm still doing, and how to keep moving forward. Not that it's always easy and not that I enjoy all this medical stuff, don't get me wrong, but when you have a choice to be positive and thankful and be in that mindset, I would rather be that every time. And I mean, I even had that this week. Monday, I messed up my port and I cut it off and thought I was going to bleed out. And I got blood going everywhere and th- they come in and I'm still joking away. They're like, okay, how are you? Are you feeling nauseated? Are you feeling like you're lightheaded? Are you- no, no, but I'm just stupid. I'm just, you know, and I have them laughing and they're going, okay, he's still going well. Let's get this under control. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, do I make mistakes in life? I do, but I'm also thankful that I knew what to do in this situation. And I had great people come alongside me and get me where I needed to be without causing further problems. Uh, that's I'm thankful, I'm thankful they were there in time. I was thankful they were there in time. I was thankful I didn't do any more damage than I did. And then I got went to God and I said, God, you know, sometimes I make stupid decisions and I'm thankful that you're watching out for me and, and that I look at the comedy in it ultimately in my life and how God teaches me things. And it's usually through comedy of errors within life. And I'm thankful that he uses those to teach me so that then I can share that with others as well. So a lot of what we talked about until the very end, there is uh, ways that we encourage others and make others smile and, and encourage them and something they would be thankful for at the end of the day. Although we can also be thankful for being given the opportunity to do that. So I shared in the beginning that one of the ways I'm put into a thankful spirit is by actually laying there and recounting my day of things I'm thankful for. Sue, how do you get yourself to live in a spirit of thanksgiving every day? Oh, I believe in that too. It's getting up in the morning and thanking God that there is another day and <laughs> thanking him for the blessings of all the people that I see on the screen in front of me. Being and, our family pictures sorry, on our, our screen. family. <laughs> and just watching over and taking care of them each and every day as they go out to the work world in their vehicles and the little children that go off to school and hoping that they have a, a positive impact on a teacher's life or another kid in their class's life. Kind of basically kind of the ripple effect, the ripple effect that happens that we may or may not get to see when this happens that, you know, when you treat somebody a certain way and you're blessing them, that however it goes forward from there, sometimes you hear about it. Sometimes someone go, hey, so-and-so said that you mentioned this to them and it really made my day. And it's like, okay, there's confirmation again, which God uses too. But it's pretty amazing that when we let the ripples go out and we're in that mindset, like Sue was saying, that it's amazing the blessings that other people can come across or that you don't even know the blessing impact that you have. But I can tell you, if I I was a negative Nancy, I know what happens then. So basically, it all begins with that focus on self with the realization of what our blessings are, because we first need to know what they are before we can give thanks for them. Do we all live in the attitude of, I know I was brought up with what we call manners, always saying please and thank you, but do we truly have an attitude of being thankful to somebody who does something for us, gives us something, even thankful to God for the little things like the convenient parking space or things that people might think are silly? I know I've practiced the presence of God where I so believe he is with me that I will talk to him and thank him for stuff as if another person was there but then always thanking the waitress for refilling my pop or all those simple things that we even expect of somebody else, but are we still thankful? Sue? 
I think that is a true statement on that. You're, again, you're just blessing somebody's day, even if they're a server or opening the door for you or something. It's just politeness. And again, that's just a, an impact on their life. Same thing. If you don't know what's going on in their life, they might be having a bad day and they're just coming along and doing whatever they need to do and turn around and say, hey, thanks. I try to make it a point to let people know even when I was working at Wendy's, if someone was having a bad day, when I was working through the drive through I always made sure that I said thank you and told them to have a great day. How about you, Gara? How do you shift it to other people, being thankful um, to them? Well, for me, it's that little thing where somebody opens a door, holds a door open for me. What did I have? I had a problem at the laundromat the other day and somebody said, oh, are you out of quarters? Well, here's a dollar. Not a huge thing to either one of us, but both of us smiled and said, thank you. And we move forward, whether it's that little blessing or just opening the door or being mindful. Somebody might step in front of me and they're like, oh, are you in line? And you're like, no, 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 it's good. You're there. Okay. Then I can start up another conversation and I'm, I'm the blessing. The, that interaction is also a neat thing is that they realized, Hey, wait, I kind of stepped in front of you and I want to rectify that. And it's been very fun to see that. So then I say the focus shifts to God as a provider of all good things. I was just in an ecclesium meeting before this, and I asked the people, okay, so concerning happiness is something external of what's going on that we can be happy about, whereas joy is something internal that our circumstances should have no effect on. Can we have joy from something other than something provided by God? What do you think? That's a deep question. Are there things that can bring you joy besides something that's from God? Yeah, I think you can have that. It's family experience in the last couple of weeks, even with the youngest daughter having the issues that she has and not wanting to come out full-fledged to really ask for help because she'd rather try to figure it out herself. But knowing that she did it on her own with other people's help, but getting herself a safer ride and hoping that the jobs that she's picked up along the way make up for that so she doesn't have the situation of where is it going to come from? Is somebody going to take it away from me. I know I prayed about it because as a mom, I was concerned and was feeling kind of bad about it. And when she picked me up to go to the play and she's like, here's my new ride, knowing that it was going to be a little bit more cost effective and everything else, but knowing that it was going to be safe for traveling with the job that she does and getting the girls where they need to go. And that brought me joy, whether she truly believes that it came from God or worked its way through with God. But I know a joy and a smile on my face, knowing that, well, God's just kind of like, well, here, you're worried about Mm -hmm. nothing. I do have it covered, whether she really realizes it or not. But in the end, you said that the gift was from God, right? Yeah. So then the joy really did originate with Mm -hmm. God. What do you think, Eric? It's hard because um, I don't like to say things bring me joy because the joy they bring me is very fleeting depending on what it is. The joy there is probably really happiness, enjoyment. I just think doing something for others outweighs any of the benefits and that brings me great joy. But again, I kind of tie that to God. He's allowed me to be out there and do this. So giving you the ability to do it. Yeah. And that, that's the part that makes it this one a good question and deep because it's making me think, okay, because I went back to this too. I've had it several times now that I'm out with Amy and we're getting out more than she ever got out up in the Northern Metro and people end up paying for our meal. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, no, 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 somebody so-and-so already paid for it or that somebody just paid for it. So don't even worry about it. And I'm going, okay, God, thank you for blessing this entire meal and time. And then I go, Lord, please put a blessing on their household as they go about what they're doing. But again, it goes back to God, but it's so cool to see people do that. And that brings joy again. But again, it's tied back. Yeah. So here's, here's my take. I don't think we can have pure joy within our spirit without it coming from God. And I refer back to this scripture I've referred to at the end of the teaching from James, where he says, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So remembering that every good gift in our life, whether it be someone paying for the meal Mm -hmm. providing for our kids so we can share in their joy, providing stuff in our family life, in our prayer life, in our relationships. These are all good and perfect gifts from God. 
So if it's a good gift, this says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from him. And these are the things that produce joy within us, even just seeing the results of an action or something. There is a distinguishing factor between happiness and joy that happiness most often is created by external circumstances, whether it be seeing the Vikings win another game. So now they've won seven in a row. We have happiness. It seems like joy, but really it's just a happiness in the moment or an external thing, right? Joy, like you were expressing, Garrett, from that internal something happening in a relationship with somebody, that is not a circumstance that's providing that. That's something coming from within. So I believe all of that comes from God. I have to agree with you because after you read that passage again, comes from above. All, all of it seems to come from above. And so I, I think you're right on the money with that. And I'll tell you, life has been much more joyous with him in my life, even though I may still have troubles, trials, tribulations, all that normal stuff. I just look at things differently now. So another thing that I wanted to stress to people is this idea that David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The first thing is he's instructing his soul to do it. So it's in his spirit to give thanks, but he's instructing his soul to do it, his mind, will, and emotions. So that kind of, to me, corresponds to the way I was raised. So I'm sure you were raised this way, Garrett. Knowing your family, I'm sure you were raised to have good manners, a please and thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, here David's instructing his soul to recognize the Lord as the source of all these blessings and give thanks. But when he says, forget not all his benefits, we have to ask ourselves, what are those benefits? What are we to not forget? And this goes back to the study we had done recently. I believe it was episode 30, Who God Says He Is. We studied the names of God and what they mean. Yep, yep. And these names are who God is, but also who he wants to be for us. So like he wants to be our righteousness. He wants to be our provider. He wants to be our shield, our protector. He wants to be all these things for us. So in studying those names, I encourage people to go back to the episode in fact, go to the website with the notes, maybe print that off or record yourself reading them. Go through these names regularly because it, again, puts your spirit into this constant understanding and knowledge of who he is, what he wants to do for us, what he wants to be to us. And it gives us that reason in our spirit to be thankful, to go after him with thanksgiving in our heart. True. So true. I love repeating those things because it helps me get into my daily groove. And then I find myself more or not, more or less, not when I'm driving to and from either dialysis or going from dialysis all the way up to take care of Amy uh, with her cares and everything. I talk to God quite a bit, like he's right there in the chairs. I consider it to be prayer, but it's more of a conversation I have with him because here's the thing, I'm having this issue, God, what's going on? And not that he audibly talks back to me. But he does point me in certain things or give me a, a, a scripture verse to look up, or I get the little hairs in the back of my neck standing up and then some comedic thing of God going, well, son, here's what you do. And I, I feel that in my being. And so be thankful for is the other part too, where your whole being is thankful and going from there is a pretty cool thing. So I think one trick to walking with the thankful spirit is to really determine to make that personal relationship with God so personal that you just believe he's there sitting on the seat next to you, sitting at the fire pit with you when you're worshiping, all these things. So do you see God as that real in your life? Yeah, I believe so. You got to have that every now and again. If You might have family members and everything else, but he is the main staple. Not all the time do we always maybe show it. The same thing, we just always try to be polite, like he would be there or anybody's there. If you say, oh, excuse me, I did this, oh, excuse me, whether you're by yourself or not, I just think it's just more of a politeness, and I think it just puts a smile on his face, knowing that down the line you were taught the proper way to behave and, you know, show it from your actions on passing it on to others. Yeah, one thing I do is the moment I wake up in the morning, well, maybe not the moment every day, but as soon as I think about it, just like I greet Sue in the morning, I greet God. Good morning, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Just puts me in that state of mind right away that God is with me. How about you, Garrett? I was going to make a comment about this too, is that when you find yourself with brothers and sisters in Christ too, 
like coming to your guys' place and doing the fire pit worship in the backyard, I can just feel the holy presence around your guys' house, no matter what's going on, if it's that or not. And anytime I've been to your place to do something, I always feel wrapped in God's love because of how you guys embrace the day, which then makes me go, okay, if I do that, that's what God wants me to be doing. And I can have a better time uh, in my life. And that's, I I did want to point that out and say, it's pretty cool to have friends that you can look at that do exactly that. And you've been living the life that God wants you to be living without necessarily being plugged into the church system or a religious system, but following God and being letting him be there with you every day. I mean, yeah, you make that personal and it gets easier and easier to really be in that moment with him and then having him guide your footsteps. And then people stop me. Why are you so happy? What's going on? Why? What's so joyful about today? Is it's an ugly day out today. What are you? What are you so happy about? And I just go, God. If you want to learn more, more I got time. <laughs> and this is uh, some of the benefits we're not to forget. You know that we can be thankful for. Yeah. So the fact that we do a lot of worship here, that we share the love of God here, that God's love and His presence is here, is a benefit we need to be thankful for. And the fact that you recognize that when you're here, you you're probably thankful to God that his presence is here also. Thankful that we do what we do to have it here. Also probably sets an example for you that I can have this at my house too. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to get there, God? We all have different mindsets and mentalities. So like the way God works with me is a lot different than the way he works and speaks to you, John. But it's also being open to that and going, hey, he knows my inner character better than I do. And he knows how best to get my attention when needed. And once I'm open to that, it's that that's another wonderful benefit of the relationship. It's like, okay, I know that's God telling me, hey, knock, knock, put in head. Why did you do that? Or, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Why? You know, stop, think, pause, and just take him in. It's, uh, I, I find it incredible. So from what we've talked about so far, I think you'd both agree that the key to having the spirit of Thanksgiving, one of the keys anyway, is to truly be developing that intimate relationship with God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to move forward without that. I mean, ever ever since we started doing this podcast stuff, I've really gotten involved where I'm praying more. I'm going to him. I'm seeking him in all things. And other people around me have mentioned, we see this growth. Okay, I don't always see it. I don't always feel it. But it's nice to hear other people come up to me and go, amazing. Okay, so I am doing the right things. And the relationship just gets better and better. Yeah, I hear some of the similar stuff. People mention this or that about me, and I'm just like, oh, I'm just doing me. So yeah. I don't know really what you're saying, but that's cool if you do. Okay. Yeah. So Sue, I noticed since we started having the fire pit worship here rather than elsewhere, you've come out and sat at the fire pit for extended times with us. Are you sensing a growth in your personal relationship with God through that time of quiet worship and meditation? Yeah, it brings me peace at the end of the day. If the day is hectic or not, it's just nice to sit and relax. And I like the songs, but I always look forward to a couple songs that I look forward to listening every time that we go out there and play the music. It just gives you a big hug at the end of the day and knowing that, hey, you did a good job today and this is how we're finishing it off. So I assume it's more so than the song. It's it's the lyrics of it that explain to you the love of God, I would think, right? Yeah. Cool. Paul writes to the Romans about God being true. He says, let God be true, though everyone were a liar. So what he's saying here is you need to believe the word of God. His word is truth. He is true. He is honest. He is faithful. This is what you need to lean on. And if someone else is contradicting that, you got to consider them to be a liar in the fact that what they're saying is not true. Not that they're necessarily lying to you about something, but who's true and who isn't. If it's what John says and it doesn't line up with the word of God, are you going to believe John or are you going to believe the word of God? And Paul is saying, always believe the word of God, believe that he is true and that everything else is wrong. And to consistently do that. And that is the way that we can build on that firm foundation of Christ, that foundation that the apostles and prophets set out, the cornerstone being Jesus Christ. And they build everything in the Holy Spirit in conjunction with the word of God. So we have to make sure that everything lines up with the word of God. And to come out of religion that shared religious activities and do this, don't do that, everything was a religious ritual or activity. 
not really being instructed about the personal relationship. And that's truly where our salvation lies, is in developing a personal relationship, trusting the work of Christ on the cross, even though we may have intellectually known that, to learn the personal side of that. It's like, am I going to believe my teachings and what the Catholic Encyclopedia said? Or am I going to believe what the Bible says in the Word of God about all I need to do is come to Him with humility and repentance, and He will give those who believe eternal life? Or am I going to believe that I need to do all these religious rituals to be shown to be good enough, when in fact I can't be good enough, I need to repent and acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of a Savior? I think, again, that just brings us back to the importance of the relationship and growing more intimate with God throughout our lifetime. I'd have to agree. Yeah, I think that's a part of it. Religion or not religion, I guess it's just a thing, I guess, for myself, the same thing growing up Catholic, still kind of having Catholic ties with family members, but not knowing like the whole part of it. For me, is knowing that God's been there. God watched over and took care of our household growing up with a single mom with five kids and not really knowing how she managed to do that. Obviously, it was God's hand being able to raise five kids without a guy and giving us what we needed at the time. Not knowing if she took care of herself, but at any point in time, you know, Christmas or birthdays or anything, she did the best she could and gave us more than we probably needed at the time. So another thing to be thankful for. Yeah. And it truly helped you become who you are today, being thankful because you're able to go through that tougher lifestyle because of the need and always being thankful that what you needed was provided in some way that you couldn't see. Yes. Garrett, you come from a household that wasn't necessarily steeped in money and multiple children. And well, you were brought up in a Christian family, correct? So yeah, you might have been able to see more clearly where this gift was coming from to be thankful. I could see it and understand it. I didn't so much understand it all as younger. I do kind of reflect there with Sue on the, we always had what we needed, not always what we wanted, but we were always taken care of and and God blessed us and all this, you know, and that's the thing I have to point my parents back to because they always felt they never did enough for us when they actually did more for us than their parents did. I think all parents kind of shoot for that kind of thing. And I I look back and I remind them all the time. I'm like, you know how blessed we really were growing up now that I look back as an adult and having that hindsight and going, you know what? It may not felt the best at the time going through it because, you know, as a kid, you always, you want to fit in at school and you want this, that, and the other thing. And our, we had our, our clothing needs were met. Everything was met and above and beyond in my mind now, but it's just amazing how, even though we may be short-sighted in our own thinking, we don't have enough money, we don't have that, that it's always enough and he's always provided. We've never gone without food. We've never gone without shelter. We've never gone without a vehicle or a ride where we need to be. We've never gone without medical coverage. You know, and I know there's a lot of other people in the world that have gone through, you know, things and not had family like that. So I have to say that's one really thing I'm thankful for is that I had the parents that made the decisions that they made while raising us and trying to do their best with what they had at their hands and the means to do whatever they could do. So, Sue, on a scale of 10 to 10, how important is a spirit of thanksgiving in your lifestyle? Well, I guess you'd have to say 10. (laughs) Well, I'd say 10. Would you say 10? 10. Yeah. 10 times 10. Yeah, we live that way. So we try to make it a practice, you know, know the presence of God, always being thankful. And it doesn't have to be lengthy prayers. I know I grew up with a uh, household that always said grace before our meals, but it was always a very specific prayer and it became a ritual. It became an exercise. Uh, it may still have been thankful in our heart, but it was just an exercise. When Sue and I sit down to eat lots of times, it's just, thank you, Jesus, for this food. Amen. But it's from our heart. Or if I'm with people and I'm asked to pray before the meal, I thank him for the company and ask him to let the conversation be a blessing to our soul and the food be a blessing to our body. We don't need to go into lengthy prayers to be thankful. It's really an attitude of the heart. Right. Well, and it shows from our family point of view, not so much from what we can see otherwise, but just in the last couple of times, spending time with Laura's kids and having sleepovers and laying their heads down to go to sleep. 
they don't close their eyes until somebody does say goodnight prayers. And it might be, again, a ritual prayer. But after that prayer, they are go around the room and say, what are the three things that you are thankful for? And it's exciting to hear little kids, you know, whether it's granny sleeping over or not, but it's thanking them for mom and dad or granny sleepover and mom and dad made supper. That kind of thing is exciting to see. And it's great to hear of little children being raised in the way of the Lord. And grandma made buttered Cheerios. Yeah. Yeah, that too. (laughs) (laughs) You can have cinnamon Uh, Cheerios if you want. Ooh. Any, uh... It's a reference to hot butter Cheerios. What is it? Just butter in a pan with some butter and garlic and Cheerios. Just it's... in a little saucepan, warmed up, right? Yep. Our it's kids better. loved it. Our grandkids love it. It's just the simple snack that everybody knows Granny will provide. And how how do you know God's involved in this? Is that I mentioned something one time at your place, and you, and Sue goes, "I used to make that all the time." And I'm like, "Well, I know why I got yep why we're together." So any final thoughts on the importance of Thanksgiving in our lifestyles, either one of you? I, th- I think I'm walking away with, I need to be a little more thankful. I, I don't know that I'm quite at 10 every day yet, but I'm getting there. It might be about an eight. But I just got to work on it a little better and be more in there and adjust my thinking to it. waking up in the morning and going, hey, God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, I'm ready to be with you today. So final thoughts? Well, I agree with that. If, if you have that every day, like we said, regardless of your situation, is waking up and saying, what kind of impact will I have on somebody's life today? And again, we don't know who that person is. It's just the slightest thing. And that's what's most important. So Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time together. I thank you for my beautiful wife and my co-host Garrett that uh, they were willing to join me. That Sue allowed me to pull her out of her comfort zone to do this with us. And we pray that there is something in this podcast that will encourage others, bless others, help them to come to a closer relationship with you and grow in being disciples. So we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So thank you both for being with me today, and we'll see you next week. Welcome. You're welcome. Next time, we'll be taking a look at prayer and worship. Both require sincerity and truth. How do we use these disciplines and why? Join me as I'm joined by a special guest to discuss this topic next time on Being Disciples. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of Being Disciples. The show is hosted on Podbean. You can find it at beingdisciples.podbean.com. Again, it's beingdisciples.podbean.com. There you can find all episodes of this podcast. There's also a patron button you can use to support this broadcast if you feel so moved. And we thank you. You can also find us on your favorite podcast platform. The notes and links for this show can be found at virtualstudywith.us. Again, that's virtualstudywith.us, virtual study with us. Feel free to use this broadcast or the notes as you disciple someone else, as you lead a small group, or as you dive deeper into your own study. From the site, you can contact us if you would like to join a study group. If you have questions or comments for Pastor John, you can contact him by email at john.anoka at virtualstudywith.us. That's john, J-O-H-N dot Anoka, A-N-O-K-A, at virtualstudywith.us, or through the contact form on the main page of the website. Please subscribe to this podcast and join us again next week as we learn more about being disciples.